Hi, and welcome back to Harry's Hobbies videos. And I'm working on the Yamaha XV1000 Virago. And to bring you up to speed a little bit, this is what I've done so, thus far. And this includes the engine. Rear wheel assembly with the shaft drive, fenders, taillights, the exhaust system. And it, this is steps 1 through 13 that I've got in my hand here. So starting with step 13, we get into some of the detailing. And in this step, we're going to be adding on step 13, the air cleaner, the rear bracket for the rear seat and the seat itself, tail, uh, turn signals, and the side panels. And this is where we're going to start since we're going to be using the side panels and the fuel tank. I have chosen a chocolate brown color. That's a metallic. It's a little hard to see in these videos. But what I'm going to work on in this particular video and show you how to do it is the lettering, which is right here, that you can barely see. And we have lettering on the fuel tank on both sides. It says Yamaha. And on the side panels, and right here, it says Virago on each of the side panels. And how I go about doing that is I use a toothpick. And I want them to be a gold color. And I do have this gold pen. But I'm not actually going to use the pen and go over it. What I am going to do is, is I'm going to wet this marker tip with some of the paint. And I'm going to use the toothpick and get some paint onto the toothpick. And then I'm going to go to the letters and just lightly touch the paint onto the letters. Because if I use the actual pen itself, it's going to push too much paint into the creases between the letters. And you don't really want that. So there's one done. It's pretty simple. It's not that tough. And then you want to do it again. Reload the paint. Make sure you've got paint on the wick. It's pretty easy to see the paint that's on the wick. Or marker tip or whatever you want to call it. And then once again we just take and kind of roll it across the letters. And just a real light touch is enough. And then we're going to go to the fuel tank. And you can see it's not uh, colored on either side. And again, I'm going to roll. And the reason I'm pushing it onto this is that wick part actually pushes up into the paint that's in the tube. So and what this does, it helps it bring some of that paint onto the wick. And we get that, once again, we get that wet. And then we just come onto our letters and roll it onto the letters. These are a little further apart than 
the letters on the side panels. But it's the same technique. And I have not added any of the decals yet. And those will get added on in this step as well, because before I put these pieces on, they'll be sealed up with a uh, gloss coat. And the decals that go on will be, uh, I usually try to let them dry for 24 hours before I spray the gloss coat. Just to make sure that there's no uh, water that's going to affect the, because it looked like the uh, gloss coat. And there we have our uh, our lettering is done. And we'll let that paint dry up real good. A little hard to see in the videos. I think you can see it. Pick this tank back up. I saw some reflection there. And again, make sure that you put the cap back on everything, the lids back on your paints. That's for in case you spill it and you don't want it to dry out. I've had this gold pen for, I don't know, five, six years now and it still works. So why not keep using it? So anyway, that's it for this particular tutorial video. And I hope you enjoyed it again. Thanks for watching. So here we go with some more from um, steps 13 and 14 on the Yamaha Virago build from Tamaya. And this is the uh, rear seat supports that I have here. I've already assembled the turn signals and, and gotten those applied to the model itself. And I'll also be adding the air cleaner assembly for this side. So this is a pretty simple and straightforward process as these just slip into place on either side. There are small uh, set holes for it, as you can see, and they kind of hold on, but this is not a snap together model. So we still have to add the glue and I'm still using the liquid cement as it seemed to hold just a little bit better and if you get a little bit of spillage it dries clear and as long as you don't touch it it's not going to uh, smear the paint off then we get this side up and in place. Oh. Come on, get in there, you little booger. And get that side on. And then we get the other side ready to go on. And I do the same thing with this. Add some of the glue. And then we place this one inside into its place on the model. You know, when I test fit all this stuff, it just freaking popped right in without any big issues. And now I'm going to place the air cleaner. And this sits right up in here.
And I'm going to have to clear this hole out just a little bit so that that piece slides in a little easier. I probably got a little too much paint or maybe a little too much glue. Something like that. Who knows what, what the heck happened there. But it, it does have pins and, and another hole for the to guide itself into its placement onto the model itself. And I test fit everything before I add the glue. And that seat gets right into here. And this I'm going to have to hold in place for a little bit while the, while the glue sets up. Otherwise, it's going to pull itself off. And that happens from time to time. But while I'm holding that in place, I can go ahead and put the first side panel on. And this was one of the pieces that uh, I painted the other day with the uh, root beer metallic color. And I did the gold paint across the uh, lettering. And this little piece fits right up in here. You can see that that fits in place. But like I said, I haven't I haven't added the glue. That's something that I do after a test fit. And put a little drop of glue in there, and then we put a small drop of glue in there, and we set this into place. That fits right nice right up in there and let's hope that this little piece is set up enough to let it go and it has and then we can come back here and on the back backrest piece you can see there's a little spread right here where these pieces fit together and once again a test fit I'll take a little bit of glue and push those together. And then we'll let that set up and dry. And that's the, the first part. There's two, three, four different sub assemblies that go along with this. And that's the first part of the sub-assemblies. I do like to let the glue get good and dry before I continue on to the other side. But that's uh, that's the parts on this side. And in the next part, we'll do the next sub-assembly. And that'll be an air cleaner on the other side. Part of the backrest. Another part of the backrest. And the other side panel and some other smaller details. So, stand by for that. That'll be upcoming next. Well, I'm back with uh, more on steps 13 and 14. Still working inside of uh, step 13, though. And the other part of step 13 was uh, adding the side panels and the air cleaner on this side. As you can see, the side panel, the air cleaner. This little piece right here. So now I'm going to be going on to this side. And kind of pretty much doing the same thing. I've got the uh, air cleaner set up right here. This also includes the rear brake pedal. And one of the oil lines. As well as the initial installation of the back seat backrest. And the little uh, tool storage piece. But as you can see, well, I don't know if you can see it in here or not. It's kind of kind of tough to see. On the back of this piece, it actually says Virago. And I painted this black. So what I'm going to do is, like I did with the um, side panels and the fuel tank, I'm going to do the uh, gold paint thing. And I'm also going to do this on the button on the seat as well. 
And again, we get our little piece of cardboard out here. So I'm going to get a little bit of paint onto the cardboard. I got a little bit more than enough there. And then I'm going to dip my toothbrush, toothpick into the paint. Get it almost dry. And then I'm going to come over and get some of this paint onto the lettering. And you want enough so that the letters kind of stand out. But you don't want to get so much that it runs in between and covers up the spaces between the letters. And then for the little dot on the uh, rear seat, I'm just going to take a little bit of paint and kind of go in a slightly circular motion. And then let the paint kind of flow to the edges. And what I do here is, is I kind of let the um, surface tension of the paint hold it in place. Without breaking that surface tension and having it run into the areas where I don't want it to go. So while that's setting up and drying a little bit. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start with. The other side panel, which there are two set holes and two posts right here. And again, I test fit everything just to make sure it's going to go in right. And we can see that that's going in like it's supposed to. So we'll pop that out. I'll take a little bit of glue and get some of that in there. And then I'm going to put the piece back in, lining it up with the holes. And then that just slides into place and it'll set up and dry quite nicely. And then the next up is the air cleaner, which slides in right there. And again, I'm taking the Tamiya liquid cement and adding to both pieces. Because for some reason, this little hole here is, is extra deep. I can't understand why, so the glue won't quite sit, so I put it on the post. And then we put that piece on, and that piece will set up and dry. And then we come to the rear brake lever, which this also has a nice little hole right here for the post to go into. You want to make sure that you get this lined up in the right manner. Because you don't want it hanging way down. It's got to be setting up here for the right foot to access. I'm having a little bit of problems getting this to slip in there because it actually goes underneath okay and since I have that in place I'm going to hold it for a second and I'm going to let the this liquid cement do its do its work and I'm going to place some on the slot right where it's where I'm holding it and I'm going to let the glue itself just run into the seams that's the advantage of using this very thin cement It'll run into the area that you need it to go.
and then that'll sit in place. And then the next piece to go in is this oil line. But I can see that I've got some paint in the set holes. So I'm going to clear those out. Excuse me. And get the paint out of the holes so that this piece will fit in. This is not critical to the model, but it is uh, scale for on the real bike, and it is on the real bike. And then this little piece goes into place. Hopefully we won't have too many issues with it lining up. Yeah, and the spark plug wire just came off, but that's not a big deal. There we go. That's in place. And then again, I'm just going to let the glue do its, do its work and let that just sit and get dry. And this hasn't quite set up the way I wanted it to. Let me put a little touch more glue on there. And then we come to the back seat piece. And that's simple enough to add on. It fits just like that. And once again, a little bit of glue on both of these pieces. Put this into place, and that really won't take long to set up either. Oops. I forgot to put this in prior to placing the seat in place. All righty. So I'll let that dry. I'll probably have a little bit of touch-up that I'll need to do to the, some of the black. Oh, yep, I'm going to have to because I smeared it with the glue. Then there's one of the things about the glue that I was talking about earlier. Right here, you can see where the paint has smeared. You can see the white that's not supposed to be. That's actually the primer. So what I'll have to do is, is touch up the whole thing with black once everything gets dry. And then I'll redo the gold button on the middle of the backrest. And then we'll move on from there. So that pretty much covers step 13 with the uh, tail lights. Backrest setup, side panels, air cleaners. The only thing I have not added yet are, is the little tiny horns that go on each one of these pieces. And I'll be adding those shortly. So, and that's actually part of step 13. But in the next video, in step 14, I'll be putting the front forks together. And that'll be a little more detailed then um, because there's the forks, the disc brakes on the wheel, the tires, and uh, we'll be moving on from there. So I appreciate you guys watching this. Hope you enjoyed it. And once again, thanks for watching. Well, I'm back for 
hopefully this will be the last part of steps 13 and 14. I think I'm on part three. Um, not real sure, can't really remember. But anyway, what this is going to consist of is the front fork assembly. And I've got the uh, forks are painted up and ready to go. These come chrome, but I wanted to add gold to the lower shock part. And uh, these kind of go together in an interesting way. Now, the uh, front support for the fender, as you can see, there's a longer part and a short part. Well, the short part needs to face forward. So when assembling this, you want to make sure that you get the right orientation for the fork itself because the brake part here should go to the rear. So this actually goes in like so. And I'm going to take the uh, Tamiya cement. I've already cleared the chrome, scraped it off as necessary away from here. So I'll add a droplet of the of the glue and I'm going to let that whoops and of course naturally of course it slipped off that's the way it goes sometimes and I'm going to set this off to the side and let it set up for a minute or two and I think I got a little bit of gold paint from the glue on my hand Oh, that's not going to work. So I'm going to let that glue dry, and I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to switch and go to the Gorilla Glue. I'm going to clean some of that glue off of the fork. I'm going to let that air out and dry. So I'm going to move on over here for just a minute, and we're going to assemble the uh, brake rotors. Now, each one of these is a little different. This one has got a pin that fits into a hole on the wheel itself. And this one has got a notched slot so that they go into the right part like so. And again, for this one, I think I'm going to use the Gorilla Glue. I just think that in this case, it's going to be a little easier not that it sets up any faster or anything like that, but it doesn't run. And I'm going to be in a little tight space here. So I'm just going to take, get that started coming out, if it will. Ah, yay, it's not going to. Sometimes it just doesn't like to cooperate. Clear that out. I had a nice little buildup of glue on there. There we go. Now it comes out quite nicely. Add a little bit of the glue around the edges because I'm going to kind of spin this in, which is going to help to spread the glue out a little bit. And there's the one side. And then I'm going to move over here to the part that's got the notch. I'm going to do the same thing. Add a little bit of glue. And I'm going to spin this into place as well. Wiggle it a little bit so that glue spreads out. And we have our brake rotor assembly ready to go. I'm going to move back over here to the fender and the front fork. And again, I'm going to use the Gorilla Glue gel. I'm not using the liquid because that's a little too thin for what I want to do. And evidently the Tamiya glue was quite thin and wouldn't, wouldn't hold it quite like I wanted to. I'm going to put this front fender into its slot. And that Gorilla Glue 
We'll hold it in place. Not necessarily better than the Tamiya and not worse than the Tamiya. It's just a little different as it sets up, as you can see. Slightly faster. Not a lot faster, but slightly faster. And then on the other front fork, I'll start with the bracing piece. And if you notice that this is in still in its uh, primer mode, and that's because I want to touch it up while it's on the forks. with some of the gold paint. And once again, this is a piece that slides into place. You want to make sure that the orientation is correct for the forks and where the fork is going to go into the front assembly on the motorcycle itself. <coughs> now this one, I will use the Tamiya cement. And get a little bit of that inside there. Make sure everything's kind of straight and orientated like it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to come up and I'm going to put these pieces together. And there we go. It's going together rather nicely. And I'm going to use some Tamiya cement on the other side of the fork assembly. As well as the top piece. And I know I'm going to have a little bit of touching up to do. After that dries, now the next step is to attach the tire, the wheel assembly, to the bike itself. And for that, I'm looking for the screws that, uh, there we go. Thought I lost these little boogers. There's two screws left. One went to the back wheel. One goes to the front wheel. And the third one will attach the uh, this assembly to the motorcycle's frame itself. And these are, uh, again, these are small screws. So from, um, pick up an inexpensive precision screwdriver set, you can usually pick these up. At, sometimes you can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot. I got these at one of those, uh, like a Harbor Freight, I think. Now, the orientation for the screw is you actually have one of these is just slightly smaller than the other side and is in a uh, triangle type shape. And what I like to do is, is push it through and check to make sure that you're getting the right one. Because it slides through that one and does not slide through the other one quite as easily. So we know it needs to go in from this way. And we line up our wheel. Assembly to. The frame. get 
our screw ready. Got it partially through one. And then we'll get it kind of started on the other one a little bit. You take the little miniature screwdriver. The thing I don't like about this is these are these are flat heads. They're not Phillips. So that makes for a little bit longer time running them in like they're like they're supposed to be. Which can be a bit of a pain. Especially when the screwdriver slips off because because it is a flat head. It's a little hard to bear down too hard on these little boogers because they're so small. You just kind of have to slowly work its way in a little bit at a time. Yeah, it's almost there. And if you go a little bit too tight, no problem. You just loosen them up just a hair and back the screw out. Okay, and there we have the, the front assembly almost complete. That little booger slipped out a little bit. Not a big deal. Let me get it back in there. And I'll actually go on the bike or something like this. Straighten everything up and it'll be good. Then we take our little other piece. This piece slips over here and helps hold everything in place. Again, I'll hit it with some Tamiya cement. let that run in real good to the uh, areas that it needs to be and I'll touch this up with a little bit of gold and then we'll be ready to move on so that's uh, that looks like it's going to be it for this series through uh, the uh, steps 13 and 14 I know that I took a little bit longer than even I expected But this will eventually get uh, on the front of the bike. And we'll have things set up and ready to go. So, once again, I hope you enjoyed this. And thanks for watching.